Holy cow. This moment is here. Welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Michelle Abs, and uh, a few months ago I had a crazy idea because a bunch of friends started messaging me and asking questions about how to buy NFTs. And so truly, because I couldn't answer them all one by one, I put us in a group chat and started sending resources and answering their questions. Um, and fast forward a couple months, here we are. Uh, this is the power of Miami Tech, truly. Like I, I have all the feels right now because fam, you showed up today and we are showing the world how we lead differently in Miami. We care about inclusion. We care about equity. We care so much that everyone woke up early enough, fought traffic, got to the Perez Art Museum, and for many of us, for the first time, we're minting our first NFTs. So we are here um, with the group and organization Web3 Equity. So Web3 Equity is an educational community for men, women, and non-binary who care about making Web3 equitable for all, specifically focused on gender equity. So many of you may know me from previous roles where I worked with uh, venture capitalists, right? And we were kind of fighting against the statistics of less than 3% of VC funding goes to female founders. That's a really uphill battle to fight to get to 50-50 representation in VC funding, right? There are decades long of institutional bias baked into that system. The opportunity with Web3 is to build from this moment right now in an equitable and inclusive way. And that is what we are all doing here. So you are doing that by minting a Tuttle Tribe today. And Tuttle Tribe is very special. And I wanna introduce you all <clears throat> to our team. Okay, so anyone that you see wearing a Tuttle Tribe shirt, give them a high five or a hug because this crew made this kind of harebrained idea real. Um, so shout out to the tribe, to the real team, to the tribe. And to my partner in crime, Jenna, I'm gonna introduce you to Jenna so she can share a few words just around the collection and why we're here today. Um, Jenna really took us to the next level she came to me and said, Michelle, this is a great idea. Let's build a website. And I was like, yeah, sure, sure. We need to do that. The next day, the website is up, sparkling, gorgeous, beautiful. All the images, all the graphics that you see are courtesy of this woman's creative brain power. So I appreciate you, Jenna, and I'm going to let you share a few words. I think that they all know me because I'm the one that's been flooding their inboxes. I'm sorry. Apologies, <laughs> everyone. I promise we'll keep it to a minimum. Um, I'm representing the team here at Web3 Equity and Tuttle Tribe, and for those of you who don't know who the collection is named after, it's named after the mother of Miami, Julia Tuttle, and to be honest with you, I, until we chose the name, didn't really know anything about her. So I started doing some reading, and I, it really took me back to being a young girl in science and history classes, where things are often taught as a chronicle of great men doing great things. And I remember being a young girl thinking, where are all the women? And it wasn't until I grew, you know, throughout my educational career that I came to understand that the women were always there. We just were never talked about. So I think it's very fitting that we are honoring Julia Tuttle, a trailblazer for her time and for ours during Women's History Month. In many ways, she died without having fully realized what she had put in motion here with the city of Miami. So we are very proud to honor her and her spirit here today and exceptionally proud to be serving the community here in Miami through our educational programming. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to Eric Gavin at Venture Miami. Thank you all so much. So today happened because people believed in us and the Venture Miami team uh, stepped up to the plate to really take this on. So thank you, Eric. Hello, everyone. It's so great to be here and see all your smiling faces. It's a Wednesday morning and you guys decided to come like at eight o'clock and nine o'clock. I just wanted you to give yourself a round of applause really quick for that. Because I know this is a tech event, but this is an education event. And although Web3 Equity made it look really sexy, it's still an education event. You still woke up and decided to come here. So I want to say thank you 
uh, and talk a little bit about what Venture Miami is and why events like this are so important for the city of Miami as we move forward. Um, Venture Miami is an initiative started by our mayor, Mayor Francis Suarez, uh, just came, my boy. Uh, <laughs> please give him a round of applause. It's an initiative started by Mayor Francis Suarez in order to help grow the tech and innovation ecosystem. And one thing that we have been really, really primed on down here in Miami is to not become a tech innovation ecosystem that disregards both the community that exists here and the people that are working really, really hard to get into the tech and innovation ecosystem that don't look like what it was originally in a San Francisco, in a New York, or in other big tech innovation ecosystems that currently exist. Miami is going to be different because people like Michelle and people like my team come together and say, we want Miami to look like something different than what has already been seen and done before. So I'm extremely excited about what Michelle has put together. I will continue to give her kudos. This is the first of very many events that we'll be putting together. And I will continue to support events like this because this is what we wanna see in our community. So if you have things that you really wanna to put together or things that you think are gaps in our ecosystem that you really wanna see when it comes to tech and innovation, thank you so much, Michelle. Please reach out to Venture Miami. I'm more than happy to talk with you. I have an open door policy. Please talk to me. I wanna work with you. I wanna build great things with you. I wanna do crazy and cool things just like this over and over again. So thank you so much. And I hope we have a wonderful evening. So it wouldn't be a party if we didn't keep our female empowerment theme going. So we are so lucky that not only our mayor believes in this, but this goes to the entire family. And Madam Mayor Gloria Fonts Suarez is here to share uh, her belief in this project and women empowerment in Miami. Hang on to that. Good morning, how are you? Good morning. Beautiful day, I'm glad the weather held up. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Gloria Suarez. I'm very excited to be here with you today. When they asked me to speak, I learned, I did a little crash course on everything that I think everyone in this room or this venue is learning little by little every day. So I'm very excited to take my first step forward in engaging and leading the educational efforts surrounding Web3. I'm here today because as you know, my husband likes to say, how can he help? <laughs> so today it's my turn to say, how can I help? <laughs> we've all heard about Miami forever and we've heard about Miami for everyone. But today let's talk a little bit about Miami for her. There are going to be many faces of Miami to, for her, and in time you'll begin to see the plans that we have in store for the city, and a large part of that initiative will begin with education. And what better way to kick this off than with today's event? And as I mentioned, many of us are learning the world of crypto, NFTs, blockchain, all these new words to our vocabulary. And what I've learned is that Web3 provides us with an opportunity to build an economy from the ground up that starts with equity and inclusivity. The more I learn about all of its applications, the more I'm encouraged to be part of this movement. And we really need more women to have their rightful seat at the table. Web3 equity is paving the way for all of us looking to get involved, increasing our knowledge and providing us with a network resources for women, investors, collectors, and creators. Michelle started with a small team, but her drive to make Web3 a thriving place for women has led her to host weekly events, networking opportunities, workshops, and experiences for us women to join. Today, Web Equity will unveil a unique NFT project. Designed by Amaranta Martinez, inspired by our city, and our female founder, Julia Tuttle, and by the How Can I Help movement. It is a collection that celebrates a city that has always embraced female leadership. So it is my pleasure to introduce to you today, Amaranta Martinez.
This is so exciting. I'm so honored to be part of this amazing community. Creating this NFT collection, I had the opportunity to work with a team of very talented and powerful women. I enjoyed this incredible experience, not only because I had the creative freedom, but because I felt the support, I felt heard, I felt loved. We have to remember that tech by itself is soulless. Art humanizes those ones and zeros. Now more than ever, tech giants have realized that an experience that connects with the soul is what fuels technology and art is an intrinsic part of that. To support a local female artist speaks volumes to the commitment this community has in helping women grow. This is one of a kind opportunity to inspire not only artists, but those seeking to break in Web3. We welcome you to join us. Here, you have the support to learn, grow, and be creative. With everything that is happening in the world right now, I would like to end with a poem by John Carl Pacampi dedicated to hope. One day you will see that it has finally come together. What you have always wished for has finally come to be. You will look back and laugh at what has passed. And you will ask yourself, how did I get through all of that? You just never let go of hope. Just never quit dreaming. And never let love depart your life. Thank you. And in true uh, Miami uh, fashion, we like to collaborate and bring public partnerships together. And today wouldn't be possible without Venture Miami and Trade Station uh, Crypto. So we are so grateful uh, for their commitment to women and to educating women. And I'm very honored to introduce you all to Sarah Potter, who is the Chief Education Officer at Trade Station. Thanks, hi, I'm so excited to be here today. All right, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about investing, but first of all, I'm gonna ask you a question. What are the five most memorable moments you've had in your life? And when you think about those things, I want you to say, what were those feelings that went along with those types of memories? And what were the choices you made in those moments? Now, think about that in terms of what are the five most memorable moments you had when it came to investing? And what do those feelings feel like? How many times have you looked at investing in NFTs or crypto and stocks and said, I have a choice and my choices have power and I can choose to try to be right, but sometimes I'm going to be wrong. I can create change. I can help build my voice and I can change how capable I feel. But at the end of the day, that choice is yours. Now, I've been investing for a long time now, and quite honestly, I'm new into the NFT world. When I have included investing in part of my life, things change, right? Because all of our time changes as we move through this. So sometimes this stuff can feel hard. So today I want to share with you the five things that are my most memorable parts in investing, and I hope that I can share some lessons for you. So the first one is my most memorable moment is when I blew up my account. Because let's face it, that's happened, and that obviously was the wrong choice. That was the moment when I looked at my life and said, I need to make some changes here. And instead of saying, this is the end for me, I'm just gonna to choose to make different decisions moving forward. The second piece is choosing to teach, and that's what's so incredible about here as well. This is where I want you to understand that you have a voice and an ability to not only learn the best in everything you can do, but to be able to share that message with other people. You are absolutely capable of doing anything that you want to do, and including investing. 
these things are part of just a skill process that you need to put together. And remember that when you build your own voice, it's also important to share that voice with other people and share that information so that this, all of this can grow. You can keep it simple. Now this part comes from me when I had, um, first off, when I had babies and I was investing before having children and thought, no problem, I've got time to do this. But when you have kids, life changes. And there was a point in time when the only time I could look at the market or make any kind of decision outside of my house was in the middle of the night. So you need to be okay with yourself and not give yourself such a hard time if you don't have time that you want to have. Life will change and so will investing. So make sure that investing is working for you and not the other way around. Now as my girls have grown older, and one of them is five years old, the other day we had a conversation and she was asking, what do I do? And it's hard to explain what the markets are, what NFTs are, it's hard to a five-year-old. But really, when I sat down there and we started looking, we were on OpenSea and we started looking at all these different options, the conversation that came out of a five-year-old was absolutely incredible. And this piece is so important. Start talking to your kids about this as soon as they can talk. Because if this becomes normal for them, then how will it change the world moving forward? We don't have to be anxious about any of these things. Again, you are absolutely capable of doing this. So let's start changing that conversation at a very early age so that everybody can feel like they can do this too. Finally, you are capable. <coughs> Trust me, there's always going to be someone judging you. Someone can look at your wallet and they're going to compare yours to theirs and they're going to say I'm better or they're better. There's going to be a feelings attached to all that stuff. But you need to know that you shouldn't be doubting yourself. Finding things that you want to invest in should be tailored to the things that are your strengths, to the things that keep you motivated. And the more that you do that to yourself and say this is who I am and this is why I want to invest in those things, the better investor you will be. It comes back to being your own cheerleader and choice. You have a choice. When you cater to your strengths, you can find ways to build investing strategies that work for you and have the capacity to be as great of a trader investor as you want to be. Over time, my life has changed. And these five choices, however, are memorable makers that have shaped not just my investment decisions, but my life. And over time, some choices have changed, while others have stayed constant. Some choices are still hard to make while others are easy. And my choices are part of my own superpower and your choices are your superpower. The choices create experiences, the memories we have, the laugh lines and the stress marks, but it's all about the choices you make in the moments in your life. so much, Sarah. Uh, so now it is my honor to introduce somebody that I can call a friend. You know that's what we say in Web3, like we decided that we didn't want to insert the I and the D, and so we don't say friend on Twitter, we say F-R-E-N. So uh, the Honorable Mayor Suarez and I go, go back a bit. Um, in fact, we had a chance to get to know each other four or five years ago. I was running an accelerator program for female founders, and we are a nonprofit, and you know we're building relationships with folks. And um, they were saying we want to keep your education program going, and they were donating to, to make that happen. Um, and the mayor was coming to an event that evening to announce uh, that he was going to give a gift. And apparently, on the elevator ride up, he said that amount's not enough, I'm gonna double it. And so when I gave him the mic that day, he said, Michelle, remember how I told you I was gonna give you 5,000? We're giving you 10. So I don't know what he's gonna tell you right now, but it's probably gonna be really good. So without further ado, my friend, Mayor Suarez. Wow, she really set the bar high on that one. Uh, I didn't bring my pocketbook. What do you take? You take crypto. I love that. All right. So a few things. First, I was listening to Sarah and she was talking about the five memories of our life. And I think I made four out of the five memories in the last 24 hours. One of them was hosting the mayor of New York at a panel that I did yesterday, followed right after that by the governor of Puerto Rico, 
where we talked about the differences uh, between our city and, and his territory. From there, I went to the Miami Heat game and I got to sit in the front row with my son, who is eight years old, and it was his first Heat game. And then this morning, I get to see my phenomenal wife. Why don't we give it, to, give it up again for... for my wife. And, uh, you know, I'm reminded of so many memories uh, in my life. And I think one of the first things that comes to mind is the fact that, but for my son and my dad, I'm surrounded by incredible women. I have, yes, I have, as you can see, a very capable and incredible and powerful wife. And if uh, you doubt how powerful she is, I can tell you uh, every minute of every day, I think he gets it too. He's like, yeah, I, I mean, every minute of every day, how incredibly important she is in my life and how she shapes me. But I have also a four-year-old daughter, part of the Tuttle tribe. Uh, I have three incredible sisters, no brothers. And I have an amazing mother. Uh, and, and uh, you know, Michelle was sort of reminiscing a little bit about the relationship between a father and a daughter and how her memories with her father right here at this very venue have shaped her life and how important that relationship is. And so it, it, it's just, it just makes me want to say, where are my ladies at? Yeah. Barbs, what's up? Get up, Barbs. Stand up, Barbs. Get up. Barbara works here in my office. Hey, Barbara. Gail. Gail. We got Ali, where are you, Ali? She's around here somewhere. We have we have our women from our uh, venture Miami, Kelly. Who else? Am I missing anybody from the office? There we go. Stand up, stand up. Melissa, stand up. Kevin? No, I'm just kidding. Just kidding, Kevin. I'm just giving you a hard time. No, it's it's incredible to be part of this project uh, that seeks to make Web3 more equitable. Web3 promises uh, to become a venue for greater economic prosperity and democratization of capital. Yeah, economic benefits that spur from Web3 are endless. Starting with empowerment of creators like artists, musicians, and game developers. Still, we have a lot of work to do to empower women properly and make sure that they're properly represented and involved in this generational opportunity to create wealth for all. Michelle has been a crucial partner to make it happen. And today's event is just another example of how her work helps make Web3 a place where women lead the conversation. As she has said, my involvement in women-led technology initiatives is long-standing, but it's necessary. And I think Eric put it very succinctly when he said, it's shameful the lack of funding that goes to women-led businesses. It is absolutely shameful. And we're going to hopefully change that narrative because not only do women deserve it because of their involvement as a percentage of the population of our world, but they deserve it just because they're better, frankly. <laughs> And so for Web3 to truly thrive, we must include and prioritize women's voices and talent. Being here and supporting Amaranta's unique art is both an honor and an opportunity to provide open access for women to learn more about what Web3 is and its power. In Web3, value is created by community, meaning that it is the people who have new opportunities to earn a living by immersing themselves in these communities. Saif, get up, you, you stand up too, Saif. You're part of this, stand up. That's it. You look very feminine today, Saif. Very feminine. Oh, you have your daughter here. Stand up, stand up. Saif's children are a money-making machines. They go around the community teaching crypto for money. It's unbelievable. So if you need 
a young adult to teach your children crypto, she's available as a tutor. Um, and in Web3, value is created by community, meaning that it's the people who have new opportunities to earn a living by immersing themselves in these communities. And today's launch of Amaranta's 3050 NFTs shows us the power of our community and the legacy of our founding mother, Julia Toro, that runs deeply in our veins. Tuttle Tribe, where you at? So, Sarah, this is one of my top five memories. Um, being here today, being inspired, being pushed to do more, to go deeper, to do more events with my wife, who's clearly a spectacular speaker and communicator uh, and a natural. By the way, I do this for a living. I do this every day. I mean, give it up for her. I mean, she does, she, this is, she does, she does not do this. I'm just sitting there and I'm going, you know, this is not fair. Like I do this every day and she's already better than me. And she, you know, she doesn't get a chance to do this very often. So anyhow, thank you so much for honoring our team with your attendance here. We hope that you uh, get involved, that you learn more, and that we are able to empower a generation of women in our city and in our country. Thank you. Well, clearly this room is very special, and we all believe in all of the messaging that we've heard so far this morning. Unfortunately, that's not always shared yet. So I have to tell you a quick anecdote. I was in Austin earlier this week for South by Southwest and sharing with folks, you know, what we're doing today and the launch of this NFT collection. And I shared with some friends who have their own NFT collections. And some of those NFT collections have grown over the past couple months where now they, to get into one of those collections, it cost you know, five Ethereum. Right now, Ethereum's at what, 2,700? So you do the math on, on it's a strong collection, fair enough. Um, but what we've built here today is also strong. And in response to me asking, hey, could you share this to the community of folks who are there? Um, these people said, well, how many, how many people are in your Discord? So, well, we just started our Discord because it's an educational community. So we're onboarding people right now. Oh, well, you know what? I can't share that with my community until you have at least 2,000 or 3,000 Discord users. It's like, wait, what? Aren't you about onboarding more people to Web3 as well? Didn't you just tell me that there's not enough women here and I literally have a group of people who want to come into Web3 and want to be a part of this and you don't want to share that opportunity? So there are gatekeepers still and they don't believe that this project could be a success. So guess what? We're gonna mint out today. And we're gonna let the world know that the rules that have been created by gatekeepers before are not going to block us out. We are gonna create our own way around doing this. And we do that by minting today. So at 9 a.m. we started what we call a pre-sale mint. This is something that many projects do. They collect wallet addresses before the actual public moment. So that means if you knew about the project before, you have a chance to get in early. That's the process we're in right now. So if you submitted a wallet address before um, last Friday, you can mint today, right now at 9 a.m. But also sometimes we look at that metric and we said, pre-sale lists are also a barrier. Right, they block people out, that's not totally fair. What if some of the people in our audience didn't have their wallet address ready? They, they are learning how to do this you know, in real time. So at noon, you will have a chance to mint with everyone else. You just need to make sure, yes, woohoo, yes. And we're gonna put this collection on the map and we're gonna show the rest of the world that gender equity is needed and we've got a tribe of folks committed to that. There's going to be programming for women, um, you know, for affinity spaces. There's programming for our male allies and there is co-ed engagement. So everyone is able to mint. And when you hold one of these Tuttle Tribe, that's your access into the educational experiences in the future. Um, so you will see QR codes. You will see folks in Tuttle Tribe shirts that can walk you through that process that you see on the screen right now. 
Um, and so what we're going to do is we are going to have a celebration moment and close out all together as a group. And then I'm asking each of you to mint your NFT. If you mint five, Alma did something special, didn't she? Alma, what hint can we give them? Did you wear something today that is like a little hint? Alma has a special ring on today. That is a flamingo. That's all I'm going to tell you. Um, but there is a piece of generative art that anyone who mints five today will also get next week. Um, when you mint, share with the world. You immediately get your NFT in your wallet. So you can show the rest of the world what it looks like. Flex. Show them that Miami skyline. Show them that how can I help tweet. Okay? Show the world what that is. If you are new and you are like, I am still not sure, you probably received an email from us and we have a session for you at 1030 today. So you stay here. These chairs are for you after and we're going to walk through the process of how to set up your wallet and get you ready for that noon mint time. If you already know, then you know your marching orders. You mint yours. You go out in the world. You flex that 305 pride and you tell them that we are here for men and women to thrive in Web3. So, probably nothing, right? So I just want to share one last huge hug with each of you for supporting this, supporting me, and now I'm going to get emotional, but like this really is special, and I love you all, and thank you all so much. Um, and I am really committed alongside the rest of this team to making Web3 equitable. And if you want to help do that, and if you think we need to do something better, you know where to find us. We're all ears. We will be responsive, and we'll make sure that we live up to that promise, just like Julia taught us. All right. Much love. Thank you all, friends. Go Mint! Woo!